knee, knee, knee puns, knee, ma. got him. Hey, what's going on guys? Um, so today I'm going to be talking about ACL tears um, because I've gone through one or two myself. So what is the ACL? So the two cruciate ligaments, the ACL and the PCL, are the primary stabilizers for anterior posterior translation uh, when the knee is flexed. The ACL also serves to resist internal rotation during AP translation. I don't know, does that, does that make sense? Yeah, I think that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense, I think. So for any movement that involves flexion and extension, whether it be walking, running, hopping, jumping, landing, your ACL or both your cruciate ligaments provide linear resistance as well as rotational stability. All right, this is gonna be a lot easier if I showed you. Uh, I don't exactly have a knee model, so we're going to use the ghetto knee model instead. So hold up a fist. Cross them over and close a fist over your middle fingers. So this is your knee and pretend my chin right here is where the kneecap is. So your knee looks like this. It flexes, bam and it extends, bam. Imagine the kneecap was just right in, around where my chin is, around where my chin is. Flexion and extension. Now, every time we flex and extend, there's a bit of movement in our knee where our tibia translates forwards. So that is your PA and AP. So your ligaments in the middle, they stop, this, they stop excessive movement. So if I have my ligaments in the middle and I'm holding onto my middle fingers, it's kind of hard to do this movement. So mechanically, ACL injuries occur when excessive force is applied to the ACL. If you put excessive hyperextension force, it's gonna put strain on your middle fingers. Also going front on, sideways forces, so your valgus and your varus forces and internal rotation are both are all movements that can rupture your ACL. Most commonly, ACLs are torn in a non-contact decelerating movement where you combine knee flexion. So going into 10 to 30 degrees knee flexion, you have a valgus force, so a force that is bending your kneecap inwards and an internal rotation force. And basically after the rupture, you only have one cruciate ligament left. So what happens is that gives a lot of room for your tibia to slide forward in a PA direction. And that's why a lot of people with acute ACL deficiencies um, tend to say that they feel very unstable on that leg. When you go in to see a physio uh, or a sports physician when you do your ACL, they'll probably do two, two, two of three tests on you. One is the functional hop test on the injured leg, the Lockman's test, which is pulling your tibia in a PA direction at 10 to 30 degrees flexion, and or the anterior draw test, which is the exact same thing as the Lockman's test, but at a greater degree of knee flexion. Finally, the last risk factor is excessive quad strength. So pretending that this is my femur, pretending that your quadriceps, or well, your quadriceps do go over your femur and attach onto your tibial tuberosity, in extension, your quadriceps are gonna pull excessively on the articulating surface of the tibia in a PA direction. So what you need to do is actually train up your quad, uh, your hamstring bulk so you have co-contractions at the same time and your hamstrings can lower your knee into extension eccentrically. And that's gonna save you a lot of strain on your ACL. Another one is Q angles. So Q angle is basically the line of your femur pulling against the line of your patella. 
And basically in girls who have wider hips, you have a Q angle that looks a bit like that. How my elbow is pointing diagonal and my kneecap is pointing straight. And what happens is because uh, of the wider hips, your knees are anatomically uh, predisposed to a valgus strain. And if that valgus strain pushes anymore, you're really stretching, trying to stretch that ligament, which ends up with a rutra. So thanks for watching. Um, hope you actually learned something. If not, then Look, 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 that's actually how you break your ACL. Valgus stress going that way, and then extension force going that way. Sasuke should have won then. That would have been game over, man. That that would have been easily game over. He won already. <laughs> Shut up, Nuri. Hey guys, a little bit of a crash course because I actually didn't really explain it before and while editing, I found out that there were a lot of holes in my explanation. Um, Basically, basic arthrokinematics of your knee, your tibia, your tibia is a concave and your femur is a convex. So in closed chain patterns, so this is when you're sitting down from a chair and your tibia, your leg, this leg, bam bam, is firmly placed on the floor, that's going to be stuck to the floor. So when you sit down, your femur is going to roll posteriorly and then it's gonna glide anteriorly, going that way. At the same time, when you have that closed chain extension, so your femur is going anterior, and now it's gliding posterior. So it's going that way. Conversely, in an open chain knee flexion, so this is when, you know, you're sitting, you kick back, and you're just kicking your leg upwards like this. So this is open chain, where my Instead of my tibia being planted, my femur is being planted. And so what happens here, All right, going into flexion, my tibia is actually going to glide posteriorly on the femur. So it's coming back and it's gliding in the same direction as how it's rolling. So it's rolling this way and it's also going to glide posterior. Coming into extension, it's going to roll anterior. So my elbow is going in an anterior direction and it's gliding in the same direction. You know, just comment if you have a question. Um, I'll do my best to answer your questions. Uh, science, I don't, I don't, I don't even know.